Okay, let's talk about light and the light equation. First thing that we want to review here is a couple of our measurements, wavelength and frequency. This statement says that wavelength is inversely related to frequency. What does this mean? Well, let me explain it with my little man at the bottom of the screen. He's standing there counting waves. First he's going to count these longer waves, these red waves. If he were to count them as they went by, and he's counting the crests now. As these longer waves go by, he's going to count how many waves if the whole screen moves by in a second. Right, he's going to say there's six waves per second, or we could write that as six hertz. That's a fairly low frequency, at least relative to this wave. My blue wave is shorter. So my man is counting blue waves next. Shorter waves. What's he going to notice about the frequency of these? Well, let's count them. The frequency of these waves would be 8. 8 waves per second, or 8 hertz. What we're illustrating here is that as the waves get shorter, the frequency gets... Bingo! The frequency gets higher. First point is that wavelength is inversely related to frequency. As wavelengths get big, frequency gets small, and vice versa. Now there's a way to write this, to express this mathematically. I'm going to show this to you, and then uh, we'll clean it up with a nice little equation. Looks like this. Wavelength is inversely related to frequency. If you wanted that to be an equal sign, you might throw in a constant instead. We could say that wavelength is equal to some constant times the inverse of frequency. And with a little algebra magic, we could move this variable frequency over to the other side. And we do that by multiplying both sides by frequency. And what that gives us is this nice looking equation. Wavelength and frequency, when multiplied, the product of these two variables gives us C, our constant. And as it works out, C, which is the speed of light in this equation, is always going to be 3.00 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. By the way, that's fast. 300 million meters per second, that's the speed of light. We'll be using that number every time we use this equation, which means if we know one of the variables, we can always calculate the other. Whenever you're working with a new equation, it's a good idea to verify units. Let me explain what I mean here. So the units for wavelength are meters, and the units for frequency are 1 over seconds, or per seconds. And what do you get if you multiply meters times 1 over seconds? Exactly, you get meters per second which is the units for speed, speed of light in this case. All right, let's try a calculation. It says a light wave has a frequency of 2.6 times 10 to the 14th hertz. What is the wavelength of this particular kind of electromagnetic radiation? By the way, this is the kind of radiation that might be used in a key fob to open the door of your car. Well, to do this, I'm going to use our equation, which says C equals lambda times nu. Speed of light equals the wavelength times the frequency. All right, so we start plugging in numbers. Now, what I like to do even before I plug in numbers is I like to identify the variable that I don't know, my unknown variable, and you can usually get that by reading the problem. It's going to be wavelength. Then I take my equation and I solve my equation for that unknown variable, which I'm going to do by dividing both sides by frequency. This will give me the equation wavelength is equal to C over nu. Now I plug in numbers, so let's write this over here. 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second divided by frequency, which is 2.6 times 10 to the 14th. Remember, this was our frequency up here, and even though it says hertz, we know that that means 1 over seconds. So in my problem, I wrote it as 1 over seconds, so that you could see that these units, 1 over seconds, are going to cancel out. And when I'm all done calculating, my answer will be in meters. 
So all that's left now is to reach for my calculator and punch in some numbers. Now my calculator gave me a very small answer. The question is, what do I do with all of these digits? And I'm certainly not going to write them all for my answer. My chemistry teacher will get upset if I do that. I am going to round this off and I will keep two significant digits. And you might be wondering, why two significant digits? Well, the answer is because my measurement, 2.6 times 10 to the 14th, has two significant digits. So in my answer, I'm only going to keep two digits and because I don't like writing a bunch of zeros, I'm going to go ahead and convert this to scientific notation. And this gives me 1.2 when I round it times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to the minus 6th power. And I really need some units on these numbers and so I write down the units which are meters. Alright, that was fun. Let's try another one. This says what's the frequency of light with a wavelength of and then we've got this very tiny number to work with. As I read this problem, I first identify that I'm looking for frequency, which is the Greek symbol nu, and that I'm given wavelength, which is the Greek symbol lambda. Next, I need an equation. The equation we're using is C equals lambda times nu. And I need to rearrange this equation. Since my unknown is frequency, this is the variable I'm looking for, I'm going to rearrange my equation solving for frequency. If I divide both sides by lambda, what happens is lambda cancels and now I can calculate what frequency equals. I now know that frequency or nu will equal C over lambda. We'll plug in some numbers. The speed of light is always 3 times 10 to the 8th. That's meters per second. And lambda is equal to a very small number that probably should be written in scientific notation. Not that it matters, but I'm going to move the decimal over just so it's easier to write and call this 6.0, keeping this 0, that is a significant digit, 6.0 times 10 to the minus 7th, and the units are meters. All that's left to do now is a calculation. I'm going to calculate the value of nu. I got a huge number. How could this be right? I got the frequency equals, and I have rounded my number so that it has two significant digits, I got 5 times 10 to the 15th power. If you look up here you'll notice the meters canceled but not the per second so those are the units that I keep for my answer. I don't even know how to say this number to the 15th power, this must be like in the quadrillions. Yeah, that's the correct answer. The frequency of light is often very big like this. So I would not be alarmed. It looks like the math all checks out just fine. And there you go. There's two example problems solved. Good luck with your homework.